In the video on frame allocation, we have seen that there should be a minimum number of frames which should be allocated to a process. Now, if the process does not have enough frames, then the page fault rate will become high because it is having not having the required number of frames which are needed for its execution, the process page fault rate will become high. So, what this page fault will be because the process wants to get a particular page and it is not there in the memory. So, it will page fault to get the required page. So, let us say the required page was here and now this process P1 had two frames. So, now this frame, this page is being brought here and this old page is ta being taken back to the swap space. So, this existing frame has been replaced by some other page, but now there is a possibility that this logical page say let us say P old which has been replaced. Now, let us say in the next instruction this P old is required again. So, again there will be a need to quickly bring it back. So, thrashing is referred to this high paging activity that means continuously or very frequently a process is facing page faults and it needs to bring the pages which are not there in the main memory from the hard disk. So, what is the process doing? The process is spending more time in paging. That means it is spending more time in bringing pages from the secondary storage to the memory and it is not spending more time executing. Most of the time is being spent in this input output from the secondary storage. So, the process is busy swapping the pages in and out. Now, the operating system it monitors the utilization of the CPU. If the utilization of the CPU is low, the operating system thinks that the CPU does not have too much work, the processes do not require the CPU. So, the operating system will increase the degree of multiprogramming. That means, if the operating system thinks that the CPU is lying idle, it will feel that it needs to bring another process to the main memory. So, from the hard disk it will try to bring another process by taking the frames which have been allocated to the existing process. So, let us say that a global page replacement algorithm is being used. So, what is global or local page replacement? You can check my earlier video. So, global page replacement means that if a new process is being brought in, then it can take frames from any other process. So, it can take frames which have been allocated to P1, it can take frames which have been allocated to P2. So, in one of these a new process P3 will be brought in. If a new process now enters and it needs now more frames. So, if now the new process that has come in, if it needs more frames and we are using global page replacement, then the new process will also start faulting and then it will take frames away from all the other existing processes. Now, the existing processes need those pages and now when the new process takes these frames away from the existing process, the existing processes will also start to fault and they will take fr frames from other processes. Let us say initially we just have had P1, P2 and P3. Let us say we just had these three processes in the memory and these three processes they did not have enough frames so they were faulting. That means the uh, page faults were happening so they were spending more time in input output. The CPU utilization went low so the operating system brought in a new process P4. Now P4 needs frames and global page replacement is being used. So, P4 will take frames from P3 or P2 or P1. Already these pages processes did not have enough pages and now P4 has also taken their frames. 
So what will happen? Now these will start faulting. P4 is also faulting. And now when P1, P2, P3 start faulting, P1 might take page from P2, P2 might take fra uh, frame from P3 and so on. They will keep on taking frames from each other. So what will happen? The faulting processes will queue up for paging. So all these processes are now in the queue to get. So P1, P2, P3, P4 all are in the queue for I.O and want a page from here to bring to the memory, from the hard disk to the memory. Now when all of these processes or most of the processes have lined up for the I.O or for paging, then again the CPU is sitting idle. So CPU utilization will decrease. So again this becomes a cycle that the operating system now will try to increase the degree of multiprogramming again. So this is called thrashing when the multi processes are having multiple page faults due to lack of frames. So to prevent thrashing, what we can do is provide a process with as many frames as it needs. But how do we know how many frames the process needs? So one strategy is that we start at looking at how many frames the process is using. So a locality model of process execution is defined. And what is this locality model? It is the set of pages which are actively being used. So let's say this is the address space of the process, the logical address space and a process is using, actively it is using page 1 and page 2 and page 4. So let's see if we monitor this process P1 and we see that page 1, 2 and 4 are being actively used, then this becomes the locality model. So as the process moves, it move, execute, it moves from locality to locality. So let's say it was currently being, this was the locality, including this page 4, then probably the locality after execution of instructions over here, then the locality might change to here. So it is the process is changing its locality that means the set of pages that it is using and a running program is composed of several different localities and these localities may overlap. So let's say for example when a function is called that is a new locality because the function might be in another page and so all the local variables and the instructions inside the function those will be used. And then when another function is called, again the locality will change. That means a new set of active pages will be in execution. So the technique is to allocate enough frames to process to accommodate the current locality. So the process should be given enough frames so that the current locality, that means the current set of active pages can be accommodated in those frames. So the process will fault for pages which are in the locality. So if all the pages in the locality are there, and so till the time they have been brought in the memory, then it will not fault again, till the time it changes locality. Once it changes locality, again it will fault till those active pages have been brought in again. If we do not provide enough frames to the process for the locality, the process will keep on thrashing since it cannot keep in memory all the pages that it is actively using. So let's say a process requires the current locality is 1, 2 and 4 that means it needs 3 frames. If we allocate only 2 frames then suppose these 2 are currently there then uh, 2 and 4 can be kept in the frames but then if 2 and 4 are there it will fault again for 1. If 1 is brought then and 4 is taken out then it will fault again for 4. So it will keep on thrashing there will be continuous page faults. So we define what is known as a working set model to find out what is the locality of a particular process. And we use a parameter delta which defines the working set window. 
and we examine the most recent delta page references and the set of pages in the most recent delta page references is known as the working set. So what does this mean? Suppose these are the page references. There is a page reference for 2, reference for page 6, reference for page 1, reference for page 5 and so on. So these were the page references. So at time t1, we are checking for the previous delta references. And let's say delta is 10. Delta can be any, any value which can be fixed. And let's say delta is 10. That means we will see what were the previous 10 references. So if we look at the previous 10 references, we see that the pages that are being referenced are 1, 2, 5, 6 and 7. So these are the 5 pages that are being referenced. You can see 1 again, 5 again and so you can see that our working set is 1, 2, 5, 6, 7. So at time T1, our working set is of this particular process is 1, 2, 5, 6, 7. That means this process needs at least 5 frames so that this working set pages can be accommodated. Otherwise, this process will start having page faults. Similarly, next we can check at T2 again, check for the previous delta page references. So again, we check the previous 10 references. And now if you see, you will see that the references are only 3 or 4. So the working set has now changed to page number 3 and 4 only. So at this point in time, this process requires a minimum of two frames. So just by looking at the working set, the system can determine how many minimum number of frames should be allocated to a particular process at any given point in time. Now let's define what is called the working set size of any process. So let's say WSSI is the working set size of process PI. That means what working set is the total number of pages referenced in the most recent delta. So working set was the, uh, the page numbers that were referenced and working set size was the size of that working set. Like for this the working set size is 5 and here the working set size has now become 2. So we know that the process I it will need WSSI number of frames because that is the working set, that is the minimum number of frames that that process need. If delta is too small, now if we make this delta too small, the, the working set window that we are determining, if this delta becomes too small, let's say delta was 2 only. So we at any given point in time, we would be checking these two pages, the previous previous references and then WSS in this case would become 2. But what would happen if we would allocate only 2 frames to this and that means only 1 and 5 would be there, page number 1 and 5. Then again it will fault here, it will fault here, it will fault here and it will keep on faulting for future references. If delta is too large, then it will, it will not encompass the entire so if delta is too small, it will not encompass the ent entire locality. And if it is too large, it will encompass several localities. So right now you can see that it requires only 5 pages. Over here you can see it can requires only 2 pages. Here if you see it will require only 3 pages. But if delta becomes too large, let's say delta we keep as 20. So at this point in time, if we check for 20 previous references, then it will be encompassing many localities, one locality here, one locality here. So if delta is too large, several localities are covered. So then you are unnecessarily allocating more frames to the process. If delta is infinity, that means it will encompass the entire program. Let's say the sum of the working set size of all the processes. Let's say P1, the working set size is 15. And for P2, the working set size is 5. For P3, the working set size is 7. So D is 
the working set size of all the processes. So, this becomes 27. So, that means this is the total demand of the frames. And if this D, which is the demand, if it is less greater than M, what is M? M is the total number of frames in the memory. So, if the demand is greater than the number of available frames in the memory, then thrashing will start. So, what should be done? That if D is greater than M, we suspend or swap out one of the processes from the main memory. So, the operating system will swap out one of the processes. So, let us say it will swap out P3 and send it back to the backing store in the secondary storage and then allocate these frames now to the thrashing processes.